pretty much an hour to prepare. Uh, we are, again, very proud, very happy. When I saw that he was flying out there, I was uh, super happy. It really helped me speed up the learning process and, and I get up to speed a lot quicker because of them. And he was absolutely perfect. He was inch perfect. It's a childhood dream to come true. Friday I was having lunch, um, having done the pole in F2. I was getting ready to start P10 in the sprint race and trying to figure out the best way to, to go about that. When I got the call that I would be doing F1, um, it was quite a surprise and quite a happy surprise of course. Not the circumstances that I wanted to make my debut um, through the misfortune of, of someone else, but um, still, it was a great opportunity. When you have a situation like this and it's unfortunate that Carlos wasn't able to race in Saudi, you need to, that academy to be able to provide what the F1 team needs. On that day, we needed a driver who could deliver, and Oli Beerman was that driver. It has been very short notice. We got the news from the hospital from Carlos, like basically, actually two hours and a half before the session, so he was quite pressed for time, the whole thing. But we were prepared for it. Pretty much an hour to prepare. I just try to get up to speed as quickly as possible. We managed to do a short race run just to, to try and get a scan of the degradation and for me also to, to get some more laps. We are again very proud, very happy because he jumped into the car in FP3 in Saudi. He was up to speed straight away. He knew how we operate, he knew how the car is. Qualifying was also difficult to prepare because uh, there are sporting regulations that uh, the driver needs to respect, so the, the time between the safety car lines, managing traffic, that of course for a, a rookie driver jumping into a car with the traffic is the very difficult task. During the dark, big step in track temperature and grip, and I was disappointed not to be in Q3, but um, anyway, I think it was a, a decent performance. I feel like I managed to prepare a lot better. Um, we had a full day to do so, rather than a couple of hours notice. In a race weekend, the most difficult part is fo focus, so I have very clear objectives. With team, we focus on the basics, so how to optimize the single lap in quarry, how to drive the car in the race, so thinking about the pace, about tires, and not about the best lap, and that is what a young driver tend to do. I lost quite a lot of time trying to overtake slower cars. Um, just not using my battery in the most efficient way because it's new. Um, I've never had to use the, the ERS in an uh, offensive or defensive way. Uh, so it was the first time for me and I maybe wasn't the best with it, uh, especially with Nico who did a great job keeping me back. And we literally uh, experienced the overtaking button, what we call it, just in the laps to the grid for the very first time for him. So to figure out uh, how to overtake uh, Nico Hulkenberg in the race, it took him a couple of laps to understanding exactly how to, to manage the, the, the whole thing. He managed it uh, quite nicely. We've always recognised that his strength is in, in his process, in, in, in how he operates, how he, how he handles himself under pressure, how he's handled himself at every stage of his career that, that we've seen. When you get to F1, it's intelligence that makes the difference. All of these guys can drive fast, but having the, the mental bandwidth um, to deal with everything that's going on around him, that's something that Oli manifested very early in his, in his karting days, in his F4 days. Feedback was a um, very good level. Of course, compared to Carlos, I had to take uh, a step back in a way because uh, the experience, of course, is not there yet. So it was quite different uh, compared to racing with Carlos, but uh, I enjoyed it because uh, when I saw that he was flying out there, I was uh, super happy and uh, he was performing at top level. To get the tips from, from Charles during the weekend, especially in qualifying, um, but even before the race, and Carlos during the race, he was pretty much guiding me through it, um, through what he saw in the data and was feeding it to my engineer. Um, it was fantastic and it really helped me speed up the learning process and, and I get up to speed a lot quicker because of them, so it was amazing. The race was pretty demanding physically, I won't lie. I think there's a few photos of my, my neck during the race which struggled. Um, I would say I was F1 ready, but uh, Jeddah is another step. So also try to have a contact point with him to, to see how physically he was supporting the race. I was challenging also the last few laps with Lando Norris coming and uh, Hamilton coming was a very difficult moment for him. 
So I try to give him the best information possible, try to keep it calm and perform at uh, his best. It's, it's a tough track. It's one of the highest um, lateral, lateral G tracks. You spend a lot of time um, in cornering and even the straights have little kinks in them that mean that pretty much the whole race, all 50 laps, you're, you're struggling with the, with the neck. So yeah, I, I did struggle. It was difficult, especially when I got out of the car. Um, but the adrenaline helps me get through the race pretty easily and afterwards I felt the pain. When you look at what happened that weekend and, and the pressure that came on him very quickly from the media, from just the exposure, you sort of think, okay, yeah, but with his limited experience, he's going to slip up somewhere, he's, he's going to make a mistake. And for me, I had one eye on those last 10 laps as Ollie was being, was being chased down by uh, Lando and Lewis. And I thought, come on, Ollie, just don't make a mistake. And he was absolutely perfect. He was inch perfect. His best lap of the race was the penultimate lap. He was getting more and more comfortable and you just thought, yeah, that is the test of the guy. In those last 10 laps, when you've got a seven-time world champion behind you trying to catch you on a, on a soft set of tyres and you don't make any mistakes, that surprised me. I did get a lot of congratulations and also good luck messages before the race. Um, my favourite one was from Sebastian Vettel. Um, I'm a huge fan of his since, uh, since the early days. And I got a hug from Lewis as well after the race. Um, that was nice that he kind of recognised um, the race for me and that was a, a proud moment for myself. What we have seen in Saudi is the result of the long project in which we invest in him. I think he has a great future. I hope he can achieve whatever he wants in life and I'm sure he can. Driving fast, that's just natural, that's talent. He can do that every day of the week. But actually operating an F1 car uh, in the heat of the moment, I think really is a testament to, to his education over the last couple of years. It's a childhood dream to come true, to to make my debut in a Ferrari festival. It's, uh, it's an incredible achievement and I'm very proud of that. And also to become the youngest British driver is, is quite, quite a statement as well. Um, and I think I was the third youngest driver ever, which is uh, pretty awesome. I'm on the podium. <laughs>